loves, it's me, Ro. Welcome back. I'm sorry I'm in my car. I literally just left the grocery store and I wanted to make this quick intro so I can get this video up for you guys because it's so important. We're here with our next installment of our series with Michael and Carol Santos. Michael did 26 years in prison. They got married while Michael was inside. They did 10 years married while he was inside and then they're going on almost 10 years. I think it's eight years of him being out. So what they're answering for you guys in today's video is all about marriage, what it's like to marry a prisoner, what it's like to marry a high profile prisoner, because as an author who is exposing a lot about the insides and the injustices of the system, Michael was very high profile. He was moved around all the time and it was really stressful for Carol. So they talk a little bit about that. They talked a lot about the sacrifices that Carol had to make because she was marrying and then married to somebody on the inside. And it was very interesting because Michael talked about what it's like to be on the inside and getting married. And basically it's all perks for them and it's a lot of crap for us so here's the video with michael and carol make sure you give them a thumbs up make sure you subscribe for more videos like this and also make sure that you leave them some love in the comments okay the next question is what advice would you give a couple who are getting married while he's doing time well for the man or for the woman? Because for the woman, I'm going to give some advice first. I'm going to say, there's no downside to me getting married when I'm serving time in prison, right? I had been in prison for 15 years. The woman I was married to when I went to prison abandoned me, I think, before I went to the, no, within six months of me getting to the penitentiary. And I got to tell you, for me, that was maybe worse than getting 45 year sentence because a man needs a woman in his life. And I spent many years always working to cultivate relationships with women while I was in there. And yet until I found Carol, um, I didn't, I, I didn't know I'd find the woman that I would spend the rest of my life with. And I was already in my, as I said, I was different by that time. I was 35. How old was I? Seven. I was 37 years old. I was fundamentally different from the time that I went in and I knew that I wanted to spend my life with Carol and I knew that love is a verb and it requires work and I was willing and eager to do the work because I could really appreciate what it would be like to have love in my life. I had nothing to lose and everything to gain. So think about that when you're marrying somebody in prison that for the prisoner particularly if he's been in for a long time he craves the smell of a woman the the touch of a woman the the way to look at you you know it would just fill me and it still does because i was inside for so long and so I think that's, if we're talking about complications, I can't keep my hands off my wife. <laughs> and sometimes you may not want me to touch you all the time, but it's just, it's because I lived so long wanting to cuddle and to hold and to touch. And yet for a woman, you may not know all of the challenges. When Carol and I got married, we were kind of pressured into marrying because there were changes in the prison system that that only allowed married couples or immediate family to visit we were not i didn't want to get married that early in our relationship we'd only been together for about a year and a half or so so we'd been courting each other for about a year and a half and i didn't think that carol had a full appreciation of the challenges of being married to a prisoner particularly someone who may have been construed as somewhat as a high profile prisoner that they would wrap me up and lock me up and transfer me across state lines and dealing with the complications. I was an author in prison and my work was covered in the media and that didn't always serve Carol well. So I wanted her to know more about that and how my complications could overflow into her life. But what I also didn't know is how incredibly strong and devoted Carol was to marry me. So I would make sure that you really know each other because a person in prison really just wants what, what, what I now have learned to be is such a gift and I cherish it and always work hard to prove worthy of her love. I don't know that all women understand that. 
that that we are, we were deprived in prison, uh, dehumanized, um, living without I would say human rights, and uh, we like to point our accusatory fingers at other countries that violate human rights, but the rights the human rights of people in prison and the family members of people in prison I would say we violate every single day in this country. And that's one of the reasons that our team at Prison Professors does so, mo so much work to try and advocate and help people understand. And that's also why I have enormous respect for strong prison wives and families, because they also try to invest a lot of time and energy to try and help the world understand. And so that's what I would advise somebody is really get to know each other. I knew myself by the time I married Carol. I had written, you know, tens of thousands. <laughs> hundreds of thousands of words and books and and I knew what I wanted to do. I didn't know that she knew what she was getting into and and, and perhaps she didn't either. <laughs> but you can answer what advice you would give and try to speak as loud as you can, honey. Uh, advice I would give to a couple getting married um, while somebody's inside is everything Michael said. Certainly you have to know each other. In addition to that, because you're living in the world, you, you really have to understand how the prison operates. You have to understand the bureaucracy uh, because it's going to be a part of your life. And if you understand that environment, it makes it a lot easier to live peacefully on the other side of, of those prison walls. Um, because you you kind of know what's what's going on in his world um, on a day-to-day -day basis. You definitely have to have activities that allow you to keep growing as a couple. There were times uh, when Michael and I would read the same book and we would write about it. Um, we were always working on projects together. Um, he was a... a uh, writing a lot of content and so I was typing and liaising with the the um, publishing. publishing houses and and really all of his I was kind of his connection to the world um, and so we were always connected that way and it's just really important to understand also what you're willing to sacrifice in your life to be married to someone who's in prison. For us, we always knew that visiting was extremely important and it was a priority for our family to be, our family being him and me, um, within a proximity that allowed for visiting at every possible time. So every time they moved him to another prison, I would also move. So there, that was something that I was, was really committed to doing. Not everyone can do that. Um, so you have to decide what are, what, how are you going to grow your relationship? What are you willing to do? What are you willing to sacrifice? I remember I wrote an article called, is it ever paradise for a prison wife? And I talked about, you know, when paradise comes after prison, in that um, the things that you're denied while the, the prison term is happening, you look forward to that. And that's when you get your paradise. For me, I was willing to sacrifice a lot because it was really important for, for me to be close enough to him in every way that I could possibly be close. Proximity, letters, phone calls. Um, so my entire life, was structured to align with his um, and what was happening in the prison. So you have to think ahead about those things. It, it, you don't want to be living in a fantasy. If you're getting married, that's a long-term commitment. So you want to be grounded in reality and thinking about what you're going to do together as a couple during the prison time and afterward and planning those things and working together. You need to have things that you can do together. Yeah, and, and to just expand a little bit on what Carol said and, and what I said when I said to really know each other and know the journey. I knew the journey of being a prisoner. I knew, understood the pain 
that she would experience if authorities locked me in segregation and transferred me across state lines. It would cause her fear, anxiety. It would disrupt her total existence. I understood that. I didn't want her to go through that, but I couldn't protect her against that. And it was one of the reasons that Carol went to nursing school and became a nurse is because I earned, I was fortunate in that as I learned how to write in prison, I could earn an income in prison and I would devote all of my resources to Carol. And we did it to choose a career for her so that if they disrupted my life, she could come and go. And nursing became that, that pathway for us because a nurse could get a job anywhere. But Carol, you definitely had to have real strength of fortitude to do what she just said. And, and, I, and I know that most people couldn't do what you did, just pack up and move. That required so much commitment on her part that I don't know that I can ever repay. But every day I try. Every day I try. I love them, their vulnerability. Actually, the next video is probably going to be the most vulnerable that they've gotten. I literally cried while I was watching it. They talk about intimacy. They talk about family stuff. And some of the intimate stuff that Carol was talking about literally was a knife through my heart because it was almost like my biggest fears about intimacy after prison and being with somebody that you've never been with came true through Carol. So, oh, stay tuned for that one. But if you're interested in watching other videos in this series, click that video there. And if you're not subscribed yet, do me a favor and click that little circle up there. Or you could always do it by clicking the red box below. I love you guys and I'll see you in the next one.